Greetings from ThemeRex team. Today we'll review the backend and customization of Allwrite full site editing WordPress block theme. Let's start with the resources. On the Theme Forest page, you have links to video tutorials, documentation, and support. On YouTube, you can find plenty of useful video guides. In the documentation, you can learn more about the theme, its parts, tools, and settings. It has this quick navigation sidebar and the search field. And finally, the support center. Feel free to submit support tickets if you didn't find any answer in the tutorials. OK, I already have Allwrite installed on my test server. Let's check the theme settings. For that, go to the dashboard. Under the Theme panel, we have three important items – Theme Dashboard, Theme Racks Add-ons, and Theme Options. Let's quickly check them. The Theme Dashboard is mostly used in the earliest stages of your work with the theme. It has six pages – General, where you can start a setup wizard and manage your license. Add-ons – here you can manage special add-ons for your audio, images, mouse helper, etc. In the Skins tab, you can choose the skin, switch to another skin and download new ones. There will be more of them soon. In the Plugins section, you can install the required plugins. As we can see, all recommended plugins are already here. In the next step, we can import the demo data. We can do that partially or import the entire demo site. And in the final step, we can make a quick setup. Here we have some essential settings like colors, logos, layouts, page settings, etc. Now let's move on to the theme racks add on settings. Here you can customize functional things. In general tab, you can work with the debug mode and some general settings. In the performance tab, you can customize settings that influence your site's loading speed. In API section, you can add any keys related to Google services, OpenStreet, Facebook, Instagram, and add your custom scripts as well. Then we have a user management settings, social media settings, you can add new items and customize current social media. Next we have banners settings, reviews functionality, you can enable reviews for your different modules, posts, pages, services, portfolio, and you can also enable comments, marks, and even choose review icons. Then we have audio effects that you can enable and customize on different pages. The mouse helper module allows customizing your cursor and the mouse helper effects. Next we have a secondary image hover effect add-on, short code settings, extended taxonomy settings, here you can add attributes to your taxonomies, and add some specific settings like layouts, columns and grids. And finally let's check theme options. In the first step, we have logo settings for different devices and color schemes. In general settings, we can customize the layout of our website. In the header settings, we can choose the header layout. The same thing about the footer settings. In the next step, we can enable or disable the front page builder and then control the rest of the modules with it. Then we have blog module settings, shop settings if the WooCommerce is enabled. After that we have a super detailed typography module. You can use default fonts or add new ones. Also you can apply custom font settings for each of your tags. Then we have a color settings. Here you can apply color schemes, enable simple or advanced editor, customize your color schemes. By default the theme has a light and dark color scheme. And finally, we have plugin setting for your different post types, portfolio, services, team, and testimonials. Now let's go to our website and quickly check the customizer. Here you'll have exactly the same settings that we saw before. Developers placed only the most essential settings here. The biggest benefit of using the customizer is that you can see the changes right away on the right side of your screen. Now let's try to customize something. I'll open some simple page, for example, About Us page. The page consists on three parts. The header, the body of the page, and the footer. Let's go up and click on the Edit Page button. 
We need to review our panel first. This is the exit to the dashboard icon. Then we have add new block icon. Here we have lots of different pre-made ready to use blocks. You can also use the search field to find the right block. Next we have the mode switcher. You can switch to just select mode. If you don't want to change anything, I'll use the edit mode though. It allows customizing your page content. Next we have the undo and redo options. Then we have an info icon here. It shows you different stats of your page. Next we have a structure panel. It's extremely useful. It allows controlling the nesting level of your sections and blocks. When you hover over the section it immediately highlights it. Then we have the design library from Cadence Blocks. If you'd like you can download some of their pre-made patterns. On the right side we can switch to the draft, preview the page, click update and enable disable the right side panel. Open the condensed block controls. Also here we can customize our view settings and visual editor tools. When you click on any block you'll have its settings on the right side. But you can always switch to back to the entire page settings at any time. In the block settings you have plenty of useful options, similar to Elementor design options. If we scroll down we will also have additional theme options applied to this page. Here we can customize the main content part of the page. In the second tab we can work with the header settings and the same for footer settings. We can also apply custom color schemes and choose options presets. Though Gutenberg is not as convenient as Elementor, you still can easily customize your page content. Let's customize something. And let's work with this title, for example. When you click on it, you can change its style on the right side. You can also change the text right in the editor. Each and every element has its custom settings and you have full control over them. Let's try to play with this block for example. I will change the icons colors and also the title colors. Now I want to add a brand new block. I can try to find the suitable one or search through them. Let's add the services here. Now let's drop it somewhere here. When I click on it, I have its settings on the right side panel. I can change the design style of this block I like this one. Let's increase the number of displayed services and place them in three columns. We can also change the order of ascending or descending. We also have some color settings, border settings, etc. Once done, click on the update button. Good, the block was successfully added to the page. Now I'll show you where you can customize your header and footer. On your top panel click edit site. It opens the full site editor and here you can go to your site templates. In templates you can customize your page parts, taxonomies and custom post types. Under the template parts you can add new templates and customize pre-made ones. We have plenty of different headers and footers here. Let's go back to our page and choose one of the custom layouts. For example, header simple cadence. Now we just need to find it in the list. 
When you open it, you now can customize the header the same way we did with the body of the page. We can add new items, check the structure, and customize available elements. Once done, click on the Save button. Now we can go back and do the same for the footer. You can open it, make necessary changes, and then save them by clicking on the Save button. Hope this video was helpful, please subscribe for more useful tutorials.